All right, 2.1, B as in boy, um, college algebra. We're in the middle of page 182, the simple interest formula. And the central simple interest formula is I equals PRT. All right, I is interest. P is principal. Principal means, um, let's say you're going to put money in the bank. Principal is the amount of money you put in. The rate is the percent that the bank is going to pay you to use your money. And T is how long you left it in there. So if you take the amount you put in times the interest times the length of time you're going to have it in there, it will tell you how much money you're going to make off of that money that you allowed them to use or that you are borrowing. So I equals PRT. Very um, important bit of information. So example six, student loans. Jared has two student loans, and they total $12,000. Okay, so when you add them up, they equal $12,000. One loan is at 5%, the other is at 8 After one year, Jared owes $750 in interest. What is the amount of each loan? Okay, so let's go ahead and make our handy-dandy little table here. So we've got the 5% loan, and we've got the 8% loan. Okay? And we have a total, because we said when we added those up, we got a total of, what did it say, $12,000. Okay, so, get rid of that right there so I have some room to write. <coughs> and this is the principal, the amount that you borrowed. All right, and we're going to have the interest rate. And what did we have for, oh, obviously, 5% or 0 0.05, and 8%, 0 0.08, and what else, time, how much time, it was one year and one year for both of those, and amount of interest he's going to end up paying, so uh, that's going to be amount, usually they'll use A, or amount of interest. Okay, so this is the interest rate. This number here is the dollar amount that you're going to um, um, owe in interest. Okay, all right, so let's start filling these blanks in. What do we know about the amount he borrowed at 5% and 8%? Absolutely nothing, but we do know that they add up to be 12000 So when we take the amount at 5 plus the amount at 8, we're going to get 12000 So let's say the amount at 5%, let's call it X. Well, the amount we inv invest, the other amount would have to be whatever X was subtracted from 12000 right? So, for instance, if this was 6,000, 12,000 minus 6, that means we had invest, we would have gotten a loan for 6,000 here and 6,000 here. If this were an 8,000, we would have had we would have borrowed at 8% 4,000. Okay, so both of these numbers add up to 12. So one has to be a number and one has to be the difference between that number and 12. Okay, so that's where that comes from. All right, amount of interest. I equals P R T. That's what the amount of interest is. So up here it's going to be X times 0 0.05 times 1. Down here it's going to be 12,000 whoops minus X times 0 0.08 times 1. Okay. And what else does it say? Um, after one year, he owes $750. Okay, so what we're going to end up doing with this is we're going to take the interest um, here and the interest here, add them together, and we should get, whoops, not 750%, $750. We should get $750. So the amount of interest is based on the amount at this one and the amount on that one. So we are going to have 0.05x from here plus 0 0.08 times 12,000 
minus x here equals 750. There's your equation right there. Okay? And uh, so what you're going to end up doing is finding x. So when you find x, you're going to find x is going to equal 7,000. So this is 7,000. What did the thing ask for? What is the amount of each loan? This loan was for 7,000, which means this loan is going to be 12,000 minus 7,000, or 5,000. So you borrowed 7,000 at 5%, and you borrowed 5,000 at 8%. Okay, so that's what we've got there. All right, sometimes we use formulas that uh, we learned in geometry or in algebra when we studied some geometry stuff, for those of you that took Algebra 2 with me. And we've got length and width and perimeter and area and all that stuff. So in example 7, we've got the soccer field. So first of all, let's write perimeter, because it's a rectangle, is going to be two lengths plus two widths. All right. So the length of the largest regulation soccer field is 30 yards greater than the width. Okay, so let's draw that. So the length is 30 yards greater than the width. So if the width is W, the length is going to be W plus 30. And the perimeter is 460. So P equals 460. All right, so let's go ahead and write what we have. 460 equals 2 times the length, length is w plus 30, plus 2 times the width. Okay? Have any problem with that? Okay. So what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the length and the width. So all we have is a w there. So let's go ahead and solve for w. That will give us a width. So, 400 equals 4w, w equals 100. Okay, so that gives me 100. Now all I have to do is add 30 to it, and I have the length. Okay, not too bad. All right, let's jump down into zeros of linear functions, and uh, we'll be getting close to being done. All right, so zero of a function. Pretty simple concept here. When we put a number in, um, in an equation, into n, we get an output of zero. It's called the zero of a function. So when y equals zero, that's called the zero of a function. So we stick a number in our function box. Okay, so we stick a 4 in there, and we have x minus... 4, what's it going to spit out? It's going to spit out a 0. So when f of 4 equals 0, that is called a 0 of a function. Okay, that's really all there is to it. You put a number in here, you get a 0 out for an answer, it's a 0 of a function. It means y is equal to 0. And we're just sticking with linear equations here, so it really shouldn't give you any trouble. And that number where you get a zero as your output uh, will always be where the, uh, the line crosses the x-axis. Okay? So it's the x-intercept is what, what the zero of a function is. Also, it can be called the root of the equation. It's the answer, basically, of what we're looking for. All right, so... When we find the zero of a linear function, we're also finding the first coordinate of the x-intercept. Okay? So we're finding um, the x-intercept of the graph of the function. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, look at example 8. We have f of x, and that equals 5x minus 9. And they want you to find the zero of f of, f of x equals 5x minus 9. So what does that mean? That just means we're going to replace this with zero. 
So 5x equals 9, x equals 9 over 5. So 9 over 5 is the 0, okay? That means that when we put this in our original problem, we're going to get a 0 out, which means we are going to be at 9 over 5, 0. That is where the line on the graph is going to cross the x-axis, right there, at 9 over 5, 0. So that's all we did. Solve for x, or first of all, set it to 0, solve for x, and you find out where the line is going to cross the x-axis. Okay? Pretty much it for that. Okay, the only other thing I want to do is um, give you some practice here on formulas. You get the uh, perimeter of a rectangle formula, and what if they say solve for L? So they just want everything moved around so that L is on one side of the equal sign by itself. All right, so we just start moving things around. Divide by 2, divide by 2, those cancel, and you're done. Okay? If they gave you something like A equals P plus P RT, and they want you to solve for P, okay, what are you going to do here? This is the part that sometimes gets to be a little tricky. We're going to factor out a P, okay, and then we're going to divide by 1 plus RT. That goes away. That's it. All right, so anyway, it's just being able to manipulate um, abstract um, equations that just have um, letters in them. Well, except, you know, a couple numbers here and there. And that should be it. So, you've got some regular problems in 2.1, and then you've got a bunch of story problems. I really, really suggest that you practice um, the story problems using your book to help you once you're stuck. But don't use the uh, book just to copy stuff down, because you're going to be given some of these problems on a test, and it would be good for you to be able to figure these out. Okay? All right, so that's it for 2.1. Wow, just two videos.